live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering ServiceNow, Knowledge17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back to Orlando, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Jeff Frick. Mark Toludo is here with Patrick Stonelake, co-founders of Fruition Partners, now a DXC company. Welcome to theCUBE. Mark, you were Thank one you. of the first SIs that we ever met in the ServiceNow ecosystem, acquired by CSC and now the spin <laughs> merge with HPE. Explain it all. Yeah. How'd you get here? Uh, well, that's great. So, uh, you know, we really grew up in the ServiceNow ecosystem, right? That's where right. really fruition became uh, really what it, what it was and is. Uh, CSC came uh, 2015. Uh, so they came, acquired us, we became Fruition Partners, a CSC brand. Uh, CSC then did an acquisition of UXC, uh, a very large uh, SI out of Australia. And with that was Keystone, uh, probably the largest ServiceNow system integrator in Australia. So they came into our practice as the Fruition Partners Australia brand. Uh, we then went out uh, under CSC and did another acquisition uh, in mainland Europe of Spidians. Uh, and they covered Switzerland, France, Germany, uh, and Spain. And so now they're the Fruition Europe brand. So we still have this Fruition practice inside of the, uh, well, inside of CSC at the time, and then HP Enterprise Services. So that's only the, uh, the EDS group, the, right. the, the services group, not the hardware, the software group. Uh, so then they choose to spin merge with CSC and form DXC. Uh, so we're still the ServiceNow practice, uh, Fruition Partners, a DXC technologies company. So all this ServiceNow, everything you're seeing, that's what we're enabling for customers. Now, Patrick, how did that all affect the go-to-market? Well, it's, it's, it enables us to be more global, right? Part of what we need, part of the reasons why we acquired these companies and continue to look to do so is that our customers are demanding from us a very consistent boots on the ground experience, multiple languages, but all kind of running the same methodologies, running the same accelerators and getting them to the finish line at the same time. Mm -hmm. So uh, DXC and the kind of checkbook and influence of DXC has really helped us uh, do our part in consolidating that market. Uh, but what I think we've really just started to scratch the surface of is how we can empower DXC as, you know, kind of become the engine that runs the nine major offerings of DXC uh, and start to get ServiceNow into support of those offerings, modernize them, make them more efficient, and make them more attractive to customers. You guys were early on, you know, we've talked about this in the past, you kind of placed your bets, mm -hmm. paid off. Um, is is this sort of workflow automation the, the next big thing? I mean, it seems like now everybody's glomming onto it. Yes, sir. Is yeah. it, and why now, and where do you see it going? You know, so we see this, as, as Patrick mentioned, DXC has nine service offering families, right? And that includes like big data, cyber, uh, vertical applications. Uh, certainly the outsourcing business is still significant. Um, but what we're seeing is ServiceNow is this workflow backbone middleware that kind of connects us all. So we have the, the DXC offering family leads coming to us and saying, listen, we understand that ServiceNow can do uh, ITOM for, for business process orchestration. We understand it has a SecOps component, so now we have an iSecOps offering. So they're seeing that ServiceNow is kind of the glue to bring together these various offerings, and it helps us go from our traditional relationship with the IT department to now branching out into HR, into security, into the, that CSM space. Uh, even in the business process automation space, that could be claims processing, they have total business functions that are automated by this workflow, but it's not just the workflow itself, it's the fact that the workflow ties in to the other silos, so that it's not just email, it's actually intelligent email and intelligent routing. So we see it as a glue to keep all these offerings together. And then you guys are starting to build solutions on top of uh, a ServiceNow platform and go to market with a solution versus Correct. you already have ServiceNow, we're going to be you know, kind of typical consultant and help you uh, you know, do best practices, et cetera. Exactly, it's, a, you know, it's kind of a combination of the two, but uh, I think the best way to think about it is that ServiceNow is doing its best to be as uh, horizontal across the enterprise as possible, right? Security is a really excellent example of a place where ServiceNow is a natural fit. You connect the cycle with security and IT, and, uh, but one of the things that we're looking to do is to, take, to bring the industry expertise of DXC to some of these ServiceNow enabled solutions. We just talked about, Mark talked about our iSecOps solution, which is horizontal managed security services. But we debuted yesterday uh, that we're going to be working with ServiceNow and their Catalyst program around a healthcare splinter 
of ISECOPS because there are all kinds of uniquely healthcare provider oriented security concerns uh, that the actual thought leadership and the knowledge of the, the cyber consultants at DXC uh, really bring a lot to the table. So we could build a solution in conjunction with ServiceNow. They rely on us for the industry expertise and they just keep that security piece humming and up to date and, and locked in with the rest of the platform. You know, we had another offering just to add to that is uh, out of Europe, uh, one of the consulting groups said, um, environmental health, employee health and safety and manufacturing plants. They said, listen, there's a product out there in the marketplace, can you do something better or different using the ServiceNow platform? So we actually took that subject matter expertise from DXC consulting experience, we married that with our ServiceNow expertise and we actually have another product that we're going to market with. It is an employee health and safety for manufacturing plants, for slip and fall, for any environmental concerns, uh, any of the safety issues that they have. But that's really combining industry and vertical expertise with ServiceNow. So and that's a, somebody might not even know they're buying ServiceNow, right? right. right. It's right. Just a, yeah. You're essentially OEMing. You know, that's the, what the we would like to right. get to. Is that yes. right? They're not there yet. I think, it, I think there's a lot of, we have a lot of kind of, we sell a standalone on top of the ServiceNow platform okay. and it gets built. Uh, Tony Beller, who's the new sure. VP Alliances, coming in with a lot of force uh, environment experience and I think he's, he's really charging with some of the bigger partners like us mm -hmm. to really lock down that OEM because I think that's where we get a lot of leverage for ServiceNow and our customers you know, essentially want to consume as they need it and that makes a lot of sense. And are you reselling uh, ServiceNow in that solution uh, yep. offering, mm -hmm. so they don't have a separate relationship with ServiceNow, it's all integrated into that, exactly. which they're purchasing yep. from you. Correct. And you guys use ServiceNow internally? or We do, yeah. As ourselves, yeah. we've been big you know, drinkers of the champagne, as they say, uh, for a really long time. We have a number of systems we use to run our professional services organization, uh, but DXC, particularly mm -hmm. in, in the area of asset management and some of the uh, real ROI driven pieces of IT is taking a very hard look at the successes they've had there and trying to figure out how we can enable that success in the rest of the organization. Purchasing, uh, project management, you know, these are things that I think we're going to do internally and then start to share those results with our customers. Well, ahead, we also more. have something called My Work Style. So there actually is how we do managed service provider outsourcing relationship that's yep. built on ServiceNow. And we do that internally as well. So basically when we get support, when we need support for our equipment, whatever worldwide, that's being logged and tracked in ServiceNow. And the ServiceNow, clearly very strong messaging around we start with IT, IT service management and then ITOM, and then we're moving into the lines of business. Mm -hmm. um, how rapidly are you seeing that in, in your customer base and maybe add a little color to that? I think we're trying to accelerate that. Yeah. I think what we're seeing is a shift as infrastructure goes to the cloud, as the IT department moves away from being the, I, the T of technology and more the information side, that they're starting to realize this role as more of a service management organization because oftentimes the applications that they're supporting are coming from a third party, if it's ServiceNow, if it's Workday, if it's Salesforce, but they can be the glue that holds it together. They can worry about the releases, the data uh, hierarchy, um, but it's that IT as they are reinventing themselves, they see themselves going out towards those other departments, towards HR, towards CSM, towards field services, saying we actually have a solution we want to bring to you. I got to ask you guys, now as a consultancy, you're, you, <laughs> complexity is your friend, right? I mean, when things are <laughs> chaotic, it's like call you guys and right. you solve yeah. the problem. But at the same time, you hear from a lot of ServiceNow customers, we're trying to minimize the custom customization, custom yes. modifications. Right. Is that antithetical to the way you guys typically do things? It shouldn't I mean, be, I don't think. No. I, be, I, be, I mean, we don't want to do as much work as possible in one project. We want to deliver value over the course of many, many transactions that are shorter in duration. And so, the more we can stick to the configurable aspect of ServiceNow, the better off we're going to be, and the better off our customers are going to be. They'll take releases more smoothly and so forth. And uh, what you can do with configuration and app scoping is really, it's a whole other level than what it was five years ago. So it's, it, we actually are starting to fulfill that promise. Okay, and so if you can build value on top of the platform using the platform, mm -hmm. That's those, the point, man. Yeah. Those <laughs> functions get the advantage of the upgrade. Yeah, yeah. I, I would look at this and say when, we re when fruition really got going, it's when we really embraced ServiceNow, not just the technology, but the methodology, because we knew a lot of other service providers, they'd want a two-year project, right? They'd want that SAP three-year, whatever it was, but we embraced the methodology and said, if we can't show results in four to five months yep. uh, using this technology, we're not going to be invited back. But look at today, we have 400 customers worldwide. Uh, about 70% of those make up our annual bookings, again, for the next project and the next project, because they see value in these increments, and we're delivering that, so I would rather not elongate projects. They yeah. need to see things very fast. Awesome. Guys, congratulations. I love the Thank story. You. Mark, you got to present to the financial analyst group yep. yesterday, yep. so well done. 
Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank, yeah, you, thank you for having us. You're welcome. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this short break.